G'day folks, Sapper here with another World of Warships video. Welcome to Bluff, or Bottom Line Upfront, a series where I review ships but give you the need to know first thing and the in-depth meat further on. Think of it as a ship review video but with a TLDR and ratings for noobs and skills at the end. Leander is a fun ship and she showed hints at Royal Navy light cruiser potential. Thankfully, if her short range or grind was too rough for you, she is excellent at scenarios and the road to Fiji can be done with relative ease. At Tier 7, Fiji has a fearsome reputation and is considered one of the strongest cruisers tier for tier in the game. But is this true? Is Fiji as ferocious in 2021 as her reputation would have you believe? Or has she been power crept off the leaderboard? With that said, here is my review of the Tier 7 Royal Navy Light Cruiser, Fiji. The bluff for Fiji is that she is one of the strongest zoning cruisers tier for tier in the game thanks to great DPM and a good consumable suite. Fiji is as strong as ever in her zoning niche but punishes mistakes and is not as flexible in 2021 thanks to more long ranged enemies and rough matchmaking. Fiji is a clear upgrade from Leander, sharing most of the same strengths and weaknesses, but feels less limiting thanks to better range and gun performance. However, Fiji is noticeably a bigger ship, both in feel and dimensions, and subsequently a bigger target. World of Warships adepts will be able to influence battles from bottom tier when playing to Fiji's strengths, but will feel the limits of her gameplay niche otherwise. Fiji is worth keeping being effective in all tier 7 game modes. Before I get into the juicy details, don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification buttons if you want to see more of my content. Fiji was interesting to play during 10.5 and 10.6. We had an active tier 6 to 7 ranked bronze league, as well as respectable matchmaking for tier 7s in randoms at times. While these elements didn't define how I assessed Fiji, they made for a great test bed. Fiji's hull is remarkably different from Leander. She has smaller 13mm bow and stern sections, and she has something of an armour belt on her citadel with 114mm. In some ways, her hull is worse. The citadel size is particularly large, the above waterline section being at least twice the length on Fiji compared to Leander, extending from the first to the last turrets. This is not unique among tier 7 cruisers, but her 13mm bow and stern are traits she only shares with Atlanta, Flint and Belfast. Fiji has good concealment for tier at 10.1km with full build. Although this is noticeable after Leander's 9km and isn't something that enables a lot of sneaky plays, it's just more to enable you to stay alive between smoke consumables. She rounds this out with a 5.4km smoke firing penalty, but more on that later. Fiji's AA is average, and if a tier 6 aircraft carrier knows what they are doing, they'll still be able to strike you. Fiji does have respectable flak and short range, but her counterplay against planes is primarily her smoke, or failing that, her mobility. Fiji has two triple torpedo launchers, one each side. She's able to single or narrow spread fire these. Fully upgraded, the torpedoes have a range of 8km, respectable damage at just under 16,000, and a reload of 72 seconds. The torpedoes are nice to have and are good at discouraging enemies from pushing into you. It is worth noting that you don't have enough torpedoes to one-shot a battleship or some cruisers. Fiji has 31,400 health, and that's a tad on the low side for tier 7. With survivability expert, this can get up to 34,550, and with signal and heals, her total effective health is just shy of 58,000. But as with the other ships in the line, Fiji takes a lot of citadel and pen damage, so it is a bit of a trick. All up, she has a respectable, if spongy health pool, but her durability is defined by her armor scheme more than her heal, and her armor scheme is fairly poor. Fiji has fairly good rudder shift and turning circle for tier with 6.9 seconds for 670 meters. This is with the rudder upgrade, which you should take given that Fiji has inbuilt propulsion upgrade, the same as the rest of the line. 
Fiji is not much of an open water cruiser thanks to her armor scheme and profile, despite her agility. Fiji has the same consumable setup as Leander before her, smoke, hydro and a heal, with four charges of each. Her heal is the standard 0.5% per second, use it early and often once there is a chunk to heal. Her hydro is the standard cruiser variant with 3km torpedo and 4km ship detection. Use it in conjunction with her smoke to see incoming torpedo threats. Fiji's smoke is the same as her predecessors, 15 second emission time, 96 second duration and 160 second cooldown. But Fiji is all about her guns. And in this regard, her bark very much matches her bite. She has 12 152mm guns in triple turrets in an AB-XY configuration with average turret angles. These guns fire the same short fuse ammo as Leander with 60 degrees of pen and ricochet up to 75 degrees. The DPM that Fiji can output is much better than Leander and is assisted by her functional range of 15.4 kilometers. Comparing DPM numbers with other ships at tier is deceptive due to her unique shell traits. What you need to know is that Fiji can dish out some impressive damage to almost any target in her reach, providing your aim is good. She is particularly brutal against enemy destroyers or broadside targets. So how do you play her? Fiji is arguably the pinnacle of Royal Navy light cruiser gameplay. Any further up the line and you run into more radar ships, which can be a bit of a hassle. Playing her is the same as playing Leander, but more attention needs to be given to where you can get shot or radared from. Battleships and heavy cruisers in her tier bracket begin to have impressive range and accuracy. Tier 7 matchmaking can be rough at times, however if you position well, Fiji has the damage output to still be effective in tier 9 matches. The core playstyle for basic and intermediate level players is to position safely, ensure you have someone to spot for you, and shoot from smoke before repositioning while safe to do so. The priority target should always be destroyers, as winning the destroyer battle often has a snowball effect for your team, and your AP absolutely wrecks them. More advanced level players will be able to take more risks and maximize on Fiji's zoning potential to stall enemy pushes. The key to this type of zoning power is to know when to focus a pushing enemy and when to spread your fire amongst many. A lot of players in the game will instinctively run or YOLO when under fire. If the enemy is inexperienced, a couple of well-placed salvos can scare them off or force them into a suicidal play. If you can manage this well, an enemy push can turn into half a push, with only one or two enemies exposing themselves without support quickly becoming easy kills. For those looking at improving their cruiser gameplay, this sort of target management is a good thing to test out and learn. The notable enemies for Fiji are heavy cruisers and battleships whose AP and SAP shells can overmatch her bow and stern sections for reliable penetration and citadel damage. The other notable enemy is a clever sneaky destroyer. Fiji's smoke firing penalty is 5.4 kilometers, and this is well outside of her 4 kilometer ship detection range with her hydro. A destroyer can get close enough without being spotted to allow enemies to quickly delete a complacent Fiji in smoke. Alternatively, the sneaky destroyer can catch Fiji out as she leaves smoke. Always be asking yourself, where is the enemy destroyer? This is why I recommend the radio location skill in my build. Fiji has a great deal of flexibility for game modes, with semi-regular tier 7 ranked in 2021, and Operation Narai in scenario mode. Playing randoms, ranked or ops to grind out Fiji is generally a positive experience, as long as players can position decently and have a good grasp of smoke cruiser play. On to the build. For modules, pick up range module first, then hull, which improves your health by 3900 and your rudder shift by a couple of seconds. And then if you are planning to keep Fiji, the Torpedo Module. The Torpedo Module only provides a meager 400 damage improvement per Torp, and if you are rushing up the line, can be ignored entirely, particularly if you aren't keeping her. 
For consumables, Fiji has access to heal, hydro, and smoke. For upgrades, pick up main battery one, engine room protection, aiming systems, and then rudder shift. You can run a hydro upgrade in slot two if you have the coal to spare. On a captain skills. Fiji has a bit of flexibility. The following is what I currently recommend. First, pick up last stand, then consumable enhancements. Those who love priority target should pick that up here, but personally, I'm not a fan. Then superintendent and concealment expert for 10 points. After that, pick up radio location for 14, because knowing where the enemy that's spotting or approaching you is crucial. Then pick up Adrenaline Rush for 17, Grease the Gears for 18, and then Survivability Expert for 21. If you wish to go an AA build for higher tiers, pick up Expert AA as your second skill, and AA Gunner for your last four points. For Captains, the Dunkirk Brothers are a great fit thanks to buff Grease the Gears and consumable skills. Cunningham is a very poor choice as his buffs align better with the HE focused lines such as battleships, heavy cruisers, or even destroyers. The full bottom line is that Fiji is one of the strongest ships tier for tier in the game within her zoning and defensive niche. Her DPM is great when accounting for her shell characteristics, she has a great utilitarian consumable kit, and is a responsive ship to control. But she is not quite the monster she once was, thanks to more long-range enemies and rough matchmaking. Any player can play Fiji and have an impact as long as they understand how to aim for short fuse AP and position carefully. Fiji is as squishy as any other light cruiser and her armor scheme is the main weakness players will need to manage, but this is nothing new after Leander. Fiji is an excellent ship and is worth keeping if for nothing more than derping around in Narai. So how does Fiji compare for noobs or skills? Fiji gains points compared to her peers for damage output, utility tools, and zoning power. She loses points on armor scheme. Fiji is a solid ship that is limited by her armor scheme and subsequently doesn't have much open water potential. So for the scores. Noobometer, eight out of 10. Basic level players will find Fiji a fun ship if they can adjust to smoke cruiser play, short fuse shells, and a poor armor scheme. Skillometer, 9 out of 10. Advanced level players will be able to work with Fiji's damage potential and consumable suite to impact games from bottom tier. However, if dislodged from a defensive position, Fiji's influence can be limited. My recommendation is to play Narai or free XP the range module and enjoy Fiji in the game mode of your choice. I found Fiji to be a fun ship, but she was tricky to play this time around compared to four years ago. Her guns are still amazing and smoke cruisers are still strong. Fiji is still a boss in 2021, just a little bit less of one. Next up for bluff is Edinburgh. Does Edinburgh live in Fiji's shadow or does she have her own tricks to teach? We'll find out next time in Bottom Line Upfront. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts down in the comments. If you didn't like this review or think I missed something, please comment and let me know. If you want to discuss Fiji, Royal Navy light cruisers, or upcoming videos, please join my Discord, Dark Lab. Link will be down in the comments. We have some cool tools in there as well, including the amazing minimap renderer by Not Your Father, as well as a great group of players of all skill levels that are happy to help in any way they can. Thanks for watching, stay healthy, and I'll catch you in the next one.